One of the ways that the body actually accommodates to higher levels of workload is what's known as the RBE, or the repeated bout effect. The repeated bout effect is basically the resistance stage from gas in action. If you recall, your immediate reaction is alarm. In the following days of a resistance training program, you may find yourself very sore. You're going to incur muscle damage at the micro, micro level, which caused delayed onset muscle soreness in 24 to 48 hours. The amount of muscle damage that you incur is going to be relative to the volume and the intensity that you performed the exercise. However, as you perform the same level of volume or intensity over time, the muscle damage response will be lower and lower. More or less, the repeated bout effect shields you against future muscle damage. And that, in turn, allows you to continue to increase the training load and continue to increase the training volume so that you can achieve progressive overload over time. So rather than seeing the repeated bout effect as something to avoid, remember, muscle damage is not the only factor in hypertrophy, which we're going to be talking about. Rather, we need to get a specific adaptation to the workload so that we can handle more, elicit the repeated bout effect so that we can keep training and keep training harder and harder so we continue to grow. But what are the determinants of hypertrophy? For us to understand how to elicit the repeated bout effect, how to organize our training, and how to manage the increasing workload required to advance at the highest level of bodybuilding, we have to understand the determinants of hypertrophy. In 2010, Schoenfeld proposed a model that basically has three factors. He stated that mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage are the primary drivers of muscle growth. However, it's important to note that mechanical tension has to occur for metabolic stress to occur or for muscle damage to occur. So it may not be accurate to state that these are three equal factors, but rather that metabolic stress and muscle damage are slaved to mechanical tension. In fact, research currently is throwing some questions at the muscle damage response being critical for hypertrophy. In fact, DeMoss recently found that the muscle protein synthesis response to, to training correlated with the hypertrophy only after it was corrected for damage, meaning that the damage response was the, the reason why muscle protein synthesis was acutely elevated, but was not related to hypertrophy. Additionally, other studies have shown that when you match workload and you have one group do a less muscle damaging exercise, hypertrophy is similar despite there being different amounts of damage. So it may be that muscle damage is part of hypertrophy, but rather it's an intrinsic process that can't be avoided. And it's just a consequence of performing muscular work, which is required to grow. Likewise, metabolic stress may only play a role when you're using lighter loads. To, to allow a weight to be stressful enough to produce hypertrophy, at light loads you need to train to failure. However, not only is there metabolic stress occurring, but individual fibers at the smallest level are still receiving a high level of tension when you train to failure. As some muscle fibers fatigue and drop out, others take on a greater level tension at the specific fiber level. So even metabolic stress has a tension component. This is why metabolic stress and muscle damage have question marks after them in this slide. There are certain things that may play a role, but they probably don't play a primary role. Whether increases in glycogen content, the hormonal response to training, the cell swelling from the quote unquote pump, or satellite cell activation from muscle damage play a role is in question. They probably do, but remember, they're always slave to mechanical tension progressive overload. So make sure that when you program, you're not putting the baby out with the bathwater. Make sure that muscle damage doesn't ever come above mechanical tension, and likewise, neither does metabolic stress. You can imagine that if you started the workout with a 20 rep Widowmaker on squats to failure, you'd be hard pressed to continue to do effective work in the rest of that session. Likewise, if you did a heavy eccentric session for an hour, you'd be so sore in the following days that your total volume for the week would probably be compromised. So always keep the practical aspects in mind when you think about the determinants of hypertrophy. To review, we talked about the general adaptation syndrome, how the immediate responses were alarm, then the resistance stage was we actually develop a specific adaptation to the imposed demand. This is the said principle. If we push it too far, we can get into exhaustion. And that's why it's important to figure out a way to balance the, tool, the dual factor model, fitness and fatigue, with intelligent programming. Periodization comes into play when you need to move from beginner to intermediate to advanced so that we can continue to progress over time in our career as an athlete. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next unit. Clap your hands now. <laughs>